Today we will perform a non-linear composite analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. The main objective of this analysis is to observe the stresses developed in a ply laminate structure when a composite plate is deformed by using an external indenter. Let's get right into it. We will be creating the composite plate as well as the indenter geometry using the geometry creation and editing tools provided within Hypermesh. After the geometry creation is done, a material and property will be assigned to all the components in the model to capture their mechanical behavior accurately. Let's start by creating a new component. Provide a name to it. We can change the color of the component as desired. Now open the Nodes tab from Geometry panel. Select As node and create a temporary node at origin location. Open the Planes tab from 2D panel. Set the Radio button to Square and select X axis from the drop down. Select the Base node and switch to Mesh Delete Surface. Enter size value as 200 and create the mesh. Let's create a finer mesh by setting the mesh density on all edges to 30. Switch to Shaded Elements mode to view the mesh properly. Open the Translate panel by pressing Shift F4. Select the temporary node in Entity Selection box. With X axis as direction, enter Magnitude as 25. Translate the node in negative direction. Open the Spheres tab from 2D panel. Select the center node. Now create a new component and provide a name to it. Let's change the color of this component. Select Mesh Delete Surface from the drop down and enter Radius value as 20. Create the sphere. Let's change the element size to 5 and recalculate the mesh. We have created the required components for this analysis. Now create a new component to store rigid elements. Open the Rigids tab from 1D panel. Set dependent node to multiple nodes and independent node to calculate node. Using the by collector selection criteria, select all the nodes from the indenter component. With all 6 degrees of freedom checked, create the RBE2 element. Next step is to create material and property for all the components in the model. Create a new material and provide a name to it. An orthotropic material is defined by MAT8 card image in Optistruct. For this analysis, we will be using a Kevlar composite material. Enter E1 as 75,000 and E2 as 6,000 megapascal respectively. New 12 is 0.34. Modulus of rigidity value is 2,000 megapascal in all directions. Density value is 1.4 e-9 ton per millimeter cube. Let's use tensile strength value as 1300 megapascal. Compressive strength is 280. Yt and Yc are 30 and 140 megapascal respectively. Lastly, we will use shear strength as 60 megapascal. Create another material and provide a name to it. 
For this material, we will enter the default mechanical properties of steel. Now create a new property. To define composite layers, the PCOMP P card image is used. Enter Z0 as 0 and keep all other settings as default. Create another property for the indenter. With card image as P shell, select the steel material in selection box. Enter thickness value as 1 mm. For the composite plate component, assign the PCOMP P as property and select the composite material in selection box. For the indenter, select property as shell. The material will get assigned automatically. To capture the interaction between the indenter and the composite plate, we will now define a contact interface between these two components. This contact will ensure the boundary type of non-linearity in this analysis. Create a new set. In the entity selection box, we will use the by collector selection criteria to select all the elements in the composite plate component. Create another set and provide a name to it. Now select all the elements from indenter component and add them to this set. Let's define a contact group between these two components. Select the composite plate as secondary entity and indenter as main entity. Switch discretization scheme to surface to surface and set the track as finite. We can review this contact. The master is blue and slave entities are red in color. And now we can start with the most important part of the analysis setup, the composite layup. We will create a ply laminate structure with 5 plies stacked with different fiber orientations. The element normals and material orientations will be adjusted to ensure that each ply has a proper fiber orientation. We will also review the ply laminate structure using the visualization tools provided in Hypermesh. Let's take a look at how this is done. Let's hide the rigids and indenter component for now. Press Shift F2 and clear all the temporary nodes. Now open the composite tab from 2D panel. Set radio button on element normals. Switch to vector display and enter size value as 1. Display the normals. We will reverse the normal direction so that the vectors are facing the indenter, that is the negative x direction. Now go to material orientation. Select the composite plate component. Set orientation vector as y axis and select this corner node as base point. Click on project to visualize the material orientation for all elements. To create the ply laminate composite structure, enable the composite browser using view panel in the ribbon. Right click create laminate. Right click on this laminate and create a ply.
we will use thickness of 0.2 mm. Assign the composite material. In shape field, we will select the composite plate set. Let's duplicate this ply to create a total of 5 plies in this laminate. We will use ply orientations as 45, minus 45, 0, minus 45, and 45 degrees. Let's assign different color to all the plies for better visualization. Close the composite browser. We will now visualize the composite layers. Switch to 2D detailed element representation. Turn on the composite layers. Now set visualization to by property. We can also view the fiber orientations for each ply in the laminate. Let's review all the plies individually to check if the fiber orientations are correctly defined. As you can see the composite has been created properly and we can move to the next step of the analysis. As the composite structure has now been defined properly, we can start creating the boundary conditions for the analysis. The composite plate will be fixed in space and the indenter will be given an imposed displacement of 10 mm. We will also define control cards to extract specific results from the analysis for post-processing. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Open the constraints tab from analysis panel. Set selection box to free edges and select all the edges of the composite plate. With all 6 degrees of freedom checked, create the constraints. We will also constrain the master node of rigid element for all degrees of freedom except translation in x direction. Create a new load collector to define the imposed displacement boundary condition. Open the constraints tab. Select master node of the rigid element. Deselect all degrees of freedom. Check box next to DOF1 and enter value as 10. Create the imposed displacement. To combine these constraints, create a new load collector. Change the card image to SPC add. Enter num value as 2 and open the table data entry. Select the SPC and displacement load collectors in tabular entry. Now create a new load step to run the analysis. We will set the analysis type as nonlinear static. Select the SPC add load collector in SPC field. Right click and create the NLparam large displacement card. Enter number of increments as 5. Similarly, create the NLOut card to output nonlinear solution data. Switch to NINT and enter value as 1. Let's show all the components. To extract specific results from the analysis, we will now create control cards. Press Ctrl F and add the global output requests card.
Check the box next to C stress and set format as H3D to output composite stress results. We will also output displacement results for post processing. Let's do the same for stress results. Now add the parameter card to the model setup. Set expert NL to auto for better conversions. We will enable hash assembly solution method to reduce solving time. Set NLA file to yes to output nonlinear animation files. Let's set NLMON to display. The analysis setup is now complete. Let's save the model in a separate folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors in the analysis run. Open Optistruct tab from Analysis panel. Set Export options to All and Run options to Analysis. Click on Optistruct to launch the solver. This may take some time to solve. The analysis is complete and we can view the results using Hyperview. Let's hide the rigids component using model browser. Open the contours tab and apply the displacement results. Let's change numeric format of the legend to fixed. Switch to transient animation mode and use the bottom slider to adjust speed of animation. Play the animation. We can clearly see the impact of indenter on the composite plate. Let's view the composite stress results. Select the first ply in layers option. With averaging method as simple, apply the stress results. Similarly, we can view the stress patterns generated in all the ply layers. We have successfully performed a composite analysis using Optistruct and visualized the stress results for all the composite layers. And this is how we can perform a nonlinear composite analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.